dear learners this is the part 2 of the videos on the unit theory of cost and cost curves dear learners in the previous video we had discussed theory of production in this video we shall discuss nature of cost curves in the short run we shall conclude this unit with the discussion of long run cost curves in the next video let us now discuss short run cost curves as we have already discussed, the short run is a period in which the firm cannot sense its plan, equipment and the scale of organization. Thus, during the short run, to increase output, the firm can only employ more variable factors with the same quantity of fixed factor. The total cost in the short run may further be divided into total variable and total fixed cost. The total variable costs are those expenses of production which sense with the changes in total output of the firm. It means that they can be adjusted with the changes in output level. For example, a bread producer wants to increase the production of bread from 200 to 350 units. Now he will require more wheat and more laborers. Therefore, expenditure on these two items is called variable cost. Variable costs are also called primary cost or indirect cost. Variable cost include expenditure on labor, raw material, power, fuel, etc. On the other hand, some components of production cannot be varied in the short run. For example, our hypothetical bed producer cannot increase its plant size quickly in the short run. He has to collect capital and order the equipment for purchasing. Such expenditure on capital equipment, building, top management personnel, contextual rent, insurance fee, interest on capital invested, maintenance cost, tax, etc. are called fixed cost. It is called so because it, is, it cannot be adjusted in the short run. Fixed cost is the cost which does not vary with the level of output. The, the fixed costs are also known as overage cost. Both total fixed cost let us call it TFC and total variable cost TVC together constitute total cost TC. Thus TC is equal to TVC plus TFC that is total cost is equal to total variable cost plus total fixed cost. Let us explain the concept with the help of the following table 8.1 which corresponds to short run. When the firm produces nothing the total fixed cost is 150. In the short run, total fixed cost remains the same, although there is increase in output, total variable cost is zero when the firm produces nothing. Now here we can see the table which shows total fixed cost, total variable cost and total cost in the short run. Okay? So when the output is zero, total fixed cost is 150, there is no total variable cost, so total cost is ultimately 150. When output is one, Total fixed cost is 150, total variable cost is 50, total cost is 200. So marginal cost is 50, we will discuss the concept of marginal cost later on. Okay. Now average fixed cost, okay, when you divide total fixed cost by the number of units, okay, it's 150, average variable cost is 50 and average total cost is 200. Similarly, when output is 2, Total fixed cost is again 150, it remains the same. Total variable cost is 80, thus total cost comes up to 230. Marginal cost is, in this case is 30. Average fixed cost is 75. Average variable cost is 40. And to average total cost is 165. Okay, so accordingly you can see the different total fixed cost, total variable cost, total cost marginal cost, average fixed cost, average variable cost and average total cost at different levels of output. Okay? The distinction between fixed and variable cost will be clear from the following figure 8.1. Okay? Let us present these uh, figures graphically. In figure 8.1, total fixed cost is parallel to the x-axis because in the short run it will remain constant whatever the level of output the firm can produce. Even if the firm does not produce anything, the producer has to bear the total fixed cost. On the other hand, the total variable cost curve, TVC, will start from the origin, meaning 
that if there is no production, TVC will be zero. Further, it can be seen that the TVC moves upward, showing that as output increases, the total variable cost also increases. The vertical summation of total variable cost and total fixed cost gives the total cost of the firm. Now, average cost curves. Dear learners, so far we have discussed total variable and total fixed cost. But in economics, the concept of cost is discussed in the context of per unit instead of total cost so that a better idea about profit is concept instantly. Therefore, we are going to discuss the short-term average cost curve. Average total cost, ETC or average cost. Okay? The average total cost is also called average cost. It is derived by dividing the total cost by the quantity produced. We have already studied the total cost is nothing but the sum total of total fixed cost and total variable cost. Thus, ATC we can de derive by dividing TC by Q or ATC is equal to TVC plus TFC divided by Q or TVC by Q plus TFC by Q. So we get AVC plus AFC. Okay, here Q is the total output produced. It means that average cost is the sum total of average variable cost AVC and average fixed cost AFC. Now, what are these average fixed cost and average variable cost? Average fixed cost, okay, let us discuss the concept. If the total fixed cost is divided by the total number of units of output produced, we can arrive at average fixed cost. Thus, AFC is equal to TFC by Q, where Q is the number of total output produced. AFC represents average variable cost and TFC represents total fixed cost. And average variable cost is the total variable cost divided by the number of units of output produced. It can be calculated in the following way. AVC is equal to total variable cost, TVC divided by Q, where Q stands for the total output produced. The average variable cost will generally fall as output increases from 0 to the normal capacity of output. But beyond the normal capacity of output, it will rise steeply because the operation of the law of diminishing returns. The shapes of average cost, average fixed cost and average variable cost have been shown in figure 8.2. From figure 8.2, it is clear that AFC curve gradually falls down as more and more output is produced. We know that fixed cost does not sense in the short run. Therefore, an increase in output produced reduces the AFC and AFC curve falls downward gradually. From column 6 of table 8.1 that we discussed earlier, we can see that the amount of fixed cost is falling as production is increasing. The AVC will generally fall as output increases from 0 to the normal capacity output. But beyond the normal capacity of output, it will rise steeply because of the operation of the law of diminishing returns, as we have already discussed. Now, marginal cost. Okay, let us discuss the concept of marginal cost. Dear learners, we shall now discuss the concept of marginal cost. However, before discussing the concept, let us go back to the concept of marginal product we have already discussed in our earlier units. Marginal product is an additional output produced. For example, a producer produces 100 units. When he produces 101 units, the extra unit is called marginal output. Therefore, the marginal cost is an addition to the total cost incurred on the, margin, on the production of that additional or marginal unit. Since total fixed cost does not undergo any sense in the short run, marginal cost may also be called an addition to the total variable cost in the short run. There is a direct relationship between AC and MC, that is average cost and marginal cost. When AC falls, MC also falls, but it is below average cost. When average cost rises, marginal cost is above it, and average cost equals marginal cost at the lowest point of average cost. Let us again draw AC and MC curve separately on the paper as has been depicted on the following figure 8.3. From the figure 8.3, it is clear that to the right of output Q, MC is higher than SC, and to the left of Q, MC is lower than SC. But at output level Q, MC is equal to SC. Thus, we find that if MC is less than SC, then SC will be falling as output increases. 
if marginal cost is greater than average cost then average cost will be rising as output increases and at point q where s is minimum we have s is equal to mc that is average cost is equal to marginal cost dear learners in this video we have discussed the different short run cost curves in the next video we shall discuss the different cost curves in the long run the discussion of the unit shall conclude with the discussion of long run cost curves in the next video thank you